Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're back in Liz's C1 today, the Mark II 1.2 PSA engine C1. Uh, it's thrown an engine code, so let's plug the scanner in and see what it is. Okay, so this is the code reader that we're going to be using. It's just a generic code reader, there's nothing specific to the make a model of car or anything like that. And the OBD2 port is just in line with the brake pedal-ish, just there. So let's get that plugged in and we'll see what the code is. Alright, so we've got the code scanner plugged in. So what we're going to do now is just read the code and see what code it comes up with. P0494, okay? Uh, if memory serves, that code is to do with the cooling system. So let's go and investigate the cooling system. Okay, well after a little bit of googling, I found out that it could be this unit just here. This is the fan control unit. Uh, essentially what it could be is one of three or four things, okay? It could either be the control unit itself, the fan, you know, the bearings and things like that started causing a problem. It could be the wiring that started to fray or things like that. Or it could just be the battery with a duff charge, so it's given a false engine management light. What I'm going to do is just spin the fan over by hand. Let's have a quick look, see. That is spinning nice and freely. I can't hear any uh, any grumbling from the bearings or anything like that. The wiring doesn't look like it's been damaged or anything in that sort of way. So the battery's good, so we know that. It has a green charge. Uh, so my money is on that control unit so what I'm going to do is to remove the control unit I'm going to get the bench power supply out and run 12 volts to the fan make sure it actually spins and that works and if that does work then I'm going to say it's the control unit so we'll, we'll change that out So this is the radiator control unit. Uh, as you can see, it um, looks like it's in better days, but it doesn't look too bad. There's no corrosion on the pins or anything like that. And there's no obvious signs of damage. So what I'm going to do is use a couple of lengths of wire and the battery terminals. And what I'm going to do is take out the, the feed for the fans one of those will be positive one will be negative and i'm going to run a wire from the battery terminals to those fan terminals and we'll see if getting power to those gets the fan to spin Okay, so what we've done then, and I did this off camera, I don't want to show you this, because I had to use some makeshift test leads, and I'll be honest, it was some sketchy shit. So, what I did was, uh, in each terminal, I used the right as negative, left as positive, hooked it directly up to the battery, momentarily, because it was sketchy, the fan did spin, so everything works on the fan. I wouldn't have expected it to be the fan anyway, so what I'm going to suggest then, is that it's the control unit that has gone knackered. So I'm going to head down to uh, a parts store and I'm going to see if I can get hold of one. It looks like there's a part number on there somewhere, maybe up there. Um, I'm going to see if I can get hold of one and we'll fit that and that should fix the problem. All right, so we're now one week later. Uh, I have the new part and I have the old part. What I'm going to do is measure the resistance of the coils on the old part first and foremost, okay? So I'm going to just test the actual coil itself. And that appears to be an open line. So that tells me that coil's knackered because it should say 0 0.8 ohms. Let's test the new one.
about an ohm 1.1 ohms that's close enough so we'll fit that we'll fit that into the old slot and we'll see what that does with the engine management like when we clear it Okay, so now it's time to try and clear that code. So I'll turn the key. Engine management light's still on. There it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and attempt to clear that code. done what I'm going to do now is check for codes again there it is unless let's try raid one more time and if I switch the key off and back on again take the code reader out and back in again just to reset the whole system then we'll have another go I may be doing this wrong I don't really do code reading much to be honest no codes there we go happy days so that seems to have fixed the problem so if I make sure it's a neutral start the vehicle engine warning lights gone off happy days good with that so and on that then, we'll call that job done, I think. So in realistic terms, that was a week's worth of work, but you know, it actually, like when you actually boil down to like the, the getting rid of waiting for parts and things like that, actually only boils down to about an hour. So more than happy with that. Uh, it was a fairly easy job. It's only uh, a couple of clips and one T20 screw uh, and anyone can do it. So it's, it's a dead easy job. I, it was much easier than I thought it would be. So yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, I enjoy doing it and you know what to do. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, usual sort of good YouTube-y good stuff. Uh, make sure you visit my sponsors, TSA Performance, who you can see on Instagram down here. Uh, and also uh, Form 7 Performance, who you can see on Instagram and the website down here. Uh, make sure you use uh, code DABDIY at their checkout for a discount. Uh, while you're at it, follow me on Instagram, DabDIY, right here. Uh, you can buy me a coffee if you so wish, uh, and if you do, you get your name in the credits for videos and stuff like that, and uh, it's up to you, no rush. Uh, but uh, remember to ring that bell, and you get notified next time I drop a next video. I'll see you then.